So we spent quite a bit of time talking about the proper way to wire things. And I said, I'm just going to have a little bit of fun because this is stuff that we've seen over the years. So we've got a couple nice examples here of the things not to do as opposed to the things that we want to do. It always amazes me when you open up the hood of somebody's vehicle and you see Romex solid core household wire in there. I hate to break it to you all, but this stuff is truly for houses. It's not designed for use in a car. In my training class, I actually have a picture that I used to use of a Porsche 944 race car that had two lengths of Romex run underneath the hood. When you go to crimp your connections, we talked about using proper crimping tools. When you're setting up wires that you're gonna connect, and you're going to crimp side cutters always love seeing that one channel locks not crimpers either one of the classics ones and you can tell is when you see the guy and he's out there and he's running some wires and yep that'll be good enough that that ought to do mentality just doesn't work there's nothing better out there and you see the guy's like i got it strips his wire out Overcuts it, tries it again, cuts half the conductors off, but that's all right because he's got this taken care of. He just twists that thing together, grabs a little bit of bubble gum, sticks around it, and puts it in the car. It's just not sufficient. One of the things we talked a little bit about was soldering. So I'm going to make a high quality solder connection here. Strip out a little bit of wire. You don't have to take no care in how you do this because it's wire, right? As long as it touches, it's going to work. It's good enough. I saw the guy down the street do it when I was a kid, so why not? So my dad's a plumber, so I go in the shop and well, I find out the old trusty torch and solder, solder, right? So it don't matter how much heat we put on this thing. You know, we just dab it up and well, she, she's good to go. But I am worried a little bit about that sticking out there. So well, my uncle's an electrician and he wires houses for a living. So I'm going to go in his shop over there and I'm going to find myself one of these here wire nuts. And well, that'll keep that from shorting out and it'll get the job done or will it? So, well, that solder joint wasn't all that good anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to wiring up that thing together and it'll be fine doesn't matter my fuel pump keeps burning up but i don't know why it's got to be them fuel pumps causing a problem because my wiring is a-okay so this is just for a little bit of fun showing some things that you don't want to do go back look at our training videos that go over the right way to do things this means it's a little bit of fun but we see this stuff happen all the time there's nothing better than the big old corroded battery terminals I love when you see a screw or a nail drove in the top. You'll see the wrong gauge wire. Things like T-taps, don't use them. Throw them in the trash. That's the only place they're good for. I love when you see a fuse block that somebody's cut and they've bypassed some wires and they've jumped it underneath the fuse and used things like fuse taps. Again, we got to love that Romex and our wire nuts. They keep things going. If you don't have the right connectors, take some time and go and get them. Don't improvise. You don't want to cut something off and make it a little bit shorter. Make sure that your wires aren't pinched underneath some things. Make sure everything's nice and tight and make sure you're using grommets so that doesn't happen. Take some time. I know this was done for a little bit of fun, but we've been serious about a lot of other things. If you see stuff like this, take it out. You find it all the time in vehicles that you go to work on. If you do anything like this, I hope you've learned something and you stop moving forward. We hope you've enjoyed our wiring series on videos.